Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be a champion guide for Skull Crusher. So let's get into it. Alrighty, let's pull up Skull Crusher here, and we're gonna go Ogre in Tribes, and then the Epic Force Affinity Defense Champion right here on the left. This is Skull Crusher, and um, excited for this one because this is one of the most requested videos and champion guides I get all the time on stream and in comment sections and stuff. And the reason being is Skull Crusher is arguably the best epic in the game because he provides ally counterattack, which is something I will go over here in a little bit, but he is definitely a game changer and a god to your epic for reasons that I will go over in this video. Uh, as always, with my champion guides, I will have one of these uh, little infographic things that I will also put down in the video description if you want to pull it up and look at it on your own time. It just shows the masteries that I currently use on my Skull Crusher, the books required, the stat priorities, and kind of a general rundown of the information. I'll go over the grades after I go over the skills. So we've got a base speed of 98, which is pretty good. We've got a base speed pretty close to 1200, which is also pretty good for a defense scaling epic champion. Then the A1 is going to be attack one enemy, place a 50% heal reduction debuff if the target's defense is lower than this champion's, which should almost always apply. Um, you know, he's a defense-based character, you're probably going to scale his defense pretty high. Then the A2, this is what he's known for, this is what makes him great. Stonewall, place a 50% ally protection buff on all allies except this champion for two turns, places a counterattack buff on all allies except this champion for two turns, places an unkillable buff on this champion for one turn. So there's a lot going on here, but the gist is ally protection and ally counterattack. Uh, the, the sticking point with Skull Crusher is that the counterattack is only for his teammates and not the whole team. It doesn't include him. So, uh, you know, the other counterattack champions are Valkyrie and Martyr. They're both legendaries. So Skull Crusher is the only ally counterattack champion that isn't a legendary. And uh, counterattack is amazing in this game. It's good in so many different areas of content. And it's also a very end game for the clan boss. That's why Skull Crusher is arguably the best epic in the game. And, uh, you know, his, his counterattack doesn't do the whole team, like Martyr and Valkyrie, but to make up for that, he gets the ally protection and the unkillable, which can bring some utility on its own. Then, the passive here decrease the duration of all debuffs on this champion by one turn at the start of each turn. That can be pretty generally useful, and if you can get the uh, clan boss to target him, it will cleanse that stun automatically. Now, admittedly, it can be kind of tough to do that, because Skull Crusher is built for... Um, like lots of sustain so this so the clan boss probably it's going to be tough to you know get him to do it i don't run skull crusher in my main clan boss team but i'm sure it's doable to get the clan boss to to target him with the stun ability and if you did do that this passive would be amazing in that scenario then the uh, aura is ally resist in faction crypts by 45. Uh, this could be good in like the boss fight scenarios where it's really important to resist the fear debuffs that the boss tries to place on you. So uh, in the boss levels of Faction Crypts, I could see this being pretty good. Uh, otherwise, not a whole lot of utility to go over there. So uh, yeah, when it comes to the grades... Um, we're gonna see campaign is a D. Uh, it's not an F because he he would have some decent utility in terms of three starring the campaign, but he's definitely not gonna be a campaign farmer or someone you're using to like farm XP. Uh, clan boss A. Uh, he, he's one of the best epics in the game for the clan boss. Counterattack compositions are very end game. There's even lots of ultra nightmare and nightmare teams that are running double counterattack like uh martyr plus skull crusher valkyrie plus skull crusher martyr plus valkyrie double counterattack champions it, it, it is very end game and uh that's why he gets an a in the clan boss arena b he's actually pretty decent all the way up to like the super end game of arena he can be a game changer and i remember being an early to mid game player losing to a lot of skull crushers in the arena uh, Dungeons B+. Plus. He's going to be really good in the Fire Knight because of the ability to provide counterattack on your whole team and burst down the Fire Knight's shield. And he'll also, you know, provide that ally protection and unkillable and, and do a good job clearing lots of the dungeon content. 
Faction Wars, A+. The Ogren Tribes are kind of a weaker faction as of right now of making this guide. And so, obviously, if you get Skull Crusher and you fully invest in him, he's going to be in your Faction Wars team and he's going to be absolutely incredible. Uh, we'll see here the stat priority. Speed and defense is king. And uh, it's very important to get his speed tuned properly to go last in your rotation. So, if all of your speeds are like 200 199 198 197 you'd want his to be like 196 you want him to be like one speed lower than your second slowest you know ally on the team because then he will place his counter attack at the end of your rotation and you won't waste any turns of that counter attack buff so that's why speed is in green is it's very important to get his speed right and then obviously we're getting his defense as high as possible and uh and then some hp can help out too as well just to provide some general sustain for the champion we don't have to really get him attack or anything like that obviously because he scales with defense and his abilities scale with defense if you will notice on the top left of the infographic i've got five epic books with an asterisk next to it um now the cool thing about skull crusher is he takes a very minimal book uh, requirement he's pretty good without any books but you can use one book at a time on him until you hit this cooldown on his stonewall ability and uh we don't even need to book his a1 because we don't care about how much damage it does okay obviously in a perfect world if you really want to min max your like clan boss team or something and get his a1 to hit you know a little bit harder you can do that um it, it's not like silly to book it but it, it's not necessary in order to get good you know return on your investment of the champion and he and he will actually do good without any books and then if you book uh the, the cooldown here for stonewall he'll be even better and you, you know it's it's possible to build him pretty close to his maximum capacity and maximum ability with one skill book so and even if you do want to max him out it's only five and five is one of the lowest in the game it's like him and doom priest in terms of epics that require the least amount of books allure is another very good one that uh is very good without any books so uh one very notable thing about him in in terms of having a very cheap uh you know book value in terms of how much it costs to make him good so that's a, an awesome selling point about him so, all right, that's going to do it for that, and I'll put that away, and we'll go ahead and go pull up my Skull Crusher here. All right, so here he is, and first, I'll go ahead and pull up the total stats. If you want to screenshot this or, or whatever, just kind of see the total stats that I have on mine. Uh, you know, the first thing you'll notice is uh, the, the huge defense of almost 5,000. We want to get him like 4,500 to 6,000, somewhere in there. Just get insane defense on him and really stack that up. One cool thing about Skull Crusher is we don't really need a whole lot of, you know, debuff accuracy on him. We're not really going to be wanting to prioritize placing any debuffs with him in a clan boss scenario. So you can actually build him with zero accuracy and be just fine. Just slam that defense and get the speed right. And then after that, just get as much HP and sustain as you can. So you'll notice the gear that I went with was the four pieces of speed and the two pieces of defense. That's because I have Battle Kazar, who is a god tier healer. If you don't have a god tier uh, healer, you're probably going to want to go like lifesteal plus speed so that he can heal himself up with those Warmaster procs. And uh, and his A1 can heal a decent amount so he can keep his HP coming in, you know, coming in, in those uh, clan boss fights and stuff. So yeah, I'll show you the pieces. Uh, it's going to be mainly just kind of speed, defense, and sustain the helm the shield gloves we're gonna go defense uh, chest we're gonna go defense and boots we're typically gonna go speed uh, now in lower levels like maybe in hard and brutal and maybe even nightmare you might be able to get away with defense percent boots as long as you have a good speed substat and good speed substats on the rest of your gear it is doable on uh, ultra nightmare but it's gonna be very hard so typically you're gonna want to go speed here but it is possible to go defense and have that be the optimal choice here uh, the ring, we're obviously going to want a defense ring with as much defense and HP as we can get. The amulet, we're going to want a defense amulet with, you know, crit, uh, crit damage, HP on the substats. And then the banner, we're going to obviously want a defense one with defense to boot. So this is a pretty good banner here for Skull Crusher. Alrighty, and the masteries. These are the ones that I currently use on my Skull Crusher. Uh, it's going to be for him to do well in the clan boss, which is why we go War Master. And uh, yeah, as always, I always say this with masteries. You're going to want to do it yourself and read through it. Don't ever just blindly copy people's masteries. Use it as a template and a guideline to kind of help you build your champion. 
Alrighty, so that's gonna do it for that. And yeah, um, so in terms of where he's gonna be best in, he's he's gonna be basically usable in any dungeon. Remember, he does place the heal reduction for the spirit keep, so he could be really good there. Uh, you would have to give him accuracy in that scenario, though. And uh, he's not gonna be very good in the spider, but he he's gonna be best in the fire knight because of the counterattack to break the the fire knight shield, and then uh, he'll do fine in, in all these other areas. So that's why he's one of the better epics in the game. And in terms of you know being good in the arena, he can be decent in the arena. Let me see if I can find uh, you know a good fight here to go over. Maybe something like this. Um, so if you're gonna use him in the arena. You'd want to, you know, at least in the team that I have, which is like a speed nuking type setup, I'm going to have him go last. And if anybody survives, he's going to place an ally protection and a counterattack buff on my team. So let's see how it goes here. If we don't burst them down and whatnot. Boom. Okay. And there you see that the, uh, they, they did end up living. My nuke didn't kill them all. And now I've placed a counterattack and an ally protection on my whole team with my skull crusher. And you can see how uh, how clutch those Skull Crown counterattacks are from the Skull Crusher. And boom, that actually worked out perfect. I got to show a pretty tough and, and pretty pretty hard fought battle there for the video i was just kind of doing that live and that was the first battle i did and that worked out to be a perfect example skull crusher was a game changer there the the, the counter attack procs on my skull crown was really pumping out the dps and we were able to kind of win a battle there that could have went either way and skull crusher was definitely a game changer there because of placing that ally protection and counter attack on the team so yeah that was a great example there on the possibilities that he does have in the arena and providing some good utility um i do want to go over let me pull this back up here i do want to go over i like to pull up the reviews um the this is pretty good i would have liked it if they did defense and speed but yeah that's not a bad recommendation there in game clean boss we're gonna give him a five counter to ally counter attacks amazing arena defense i'll give him a four he's pretty good arena offense a three is okay fire knight five Ice Golem 4, Minnow 4, Spider is is not really good. I'll, I'll give him a 2, Dragon's a 4, Campaign. I mean, he's okay for like 3-starring it maybe, but that's about it. We'll give him that. Um, I'll give him a 3. Magic Keep, again a 3. Void four and spirit keep he's got the uh heal reduction but he's affinity countered so i'll give it a four and then not pictured here is the arcane keep and faction wars he'd be like a four in the arcane keep and a five in faction wars okay so now i will uh show you before i end the video i'll show you a little bit of, of, a, of a clan boss fight here and uh we'll go nightmare battle and i'm probably just gonna slot him in instead of valkyrie so we'll get the defense aura from martyr and then we'll have our our skull crusher in here as our second counter attack champion okay i'm gonna pick it up here kind of towards the end of the clan boss fight here on nightmare and uh yeah you'll be able to kind of see the numbers that i was able to you know put out with skull crusher featured in my team and this is honestly like the worst case scenario for him with the boss being spirit because uh you know obviously spirit counters force so it means skull crusher is gonna be you know hitting for weak and he's gonna be getting hit extra hard and you know you saw there the unshakable passive that was pretty cool how he got targeted by the stun like i was talking about earlier and then he instantly cleansed it so it, it's kind of cool that i picked it up just in time here to show that effect happening and uh yeah so i'm excited to see kind of what this team does on nightmare 
and in, in a worst case scenario for Skullcrusher. I've already lost the uh, Dracomorph. There was the Unshakable passive again. And uh, yeah, so I would assume it's probably going to end. And we saw there, uh, you know, Bad Out getting hit for 100k already. So yeah, the, the clan boss is pretty riled up and it's probably going to be ending pretty soon here. But they're still holding on strong, and Jareg is the last to go down. And there it is. Alright, so yeah, 21.2 million on Nightmare, and that would be like the worst case scenario for Skullcrusher. And I, I haven't really perfected and min-maxed the team around Skullcrusher. And uh, a lot of people do like, uh, it probably would have been better to pair him with Valkyrie to have the shield and stuff. And then use Jareg's like HP Ara. Uh, you know, I would have to play with that stuff to really min-max the team. But yeah, that's kind of what it was capable. Of. And he did 2.6, which is going to be basically all of the Warmaster procs. You know, him and Jareg aren't really damage dealers. So we can see they both did about the same with just their like Warmaster procs. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. And uh, if you got Skull Crusher, he's amazing. Down in the video description, I have both the infographic and my champion tier list. You can see where I have Skull Crusher and all the other champions in the game ranked. Skull Crusher is up in the god tier for epics. So if you do have him, you definitely want to six star him and invest in him. And uh, he can be good with just like one book or no books at all. You can get some pretty good value out of him, which makes him a very cool champion. So uh, yeah. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.